Hello boys and girls, friends from uh, every corners of the world. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long while, but uh, I hope we have something nice for you today. We have this uh, 1944 Omega with a bumper movement. And there aren't uh, that many bumper videos around, so uh, hopefully this will be a good one. As we always do, let's first check uh, all the functions of the movement. Chronograph, yeah, moon phase, equation of time. Well, I cannot see the tourbillon, but apart from that, everything looks all right. So it's obviously a very basic movement in terms of the functions. But it has a very interesting uh, case back. There's this ring that holds the case back in place, a little bit like a bezel on the crystal side. And that solution is something that's quite common with uh, French watches and perhaps Russian watches in particular. And this is the bumper. So it's not a full rotor, it's uh, 120 degree uh, weight. Now a watch of this age, we do not really expect to run uh, super well but we should be able to uh, make it run better than that. Let's first take uh, the straps off and get the stem out. You might have seen that the watch has this uh, very nice uh, gold bezel and lugs. And the dial is original and it's in very good condition. So that's nice to see. A key reason why an old dial like this can be in such a good condition is uh, because there is no loom. When loom uh, degrades, it often spreads out and starts destroying the varnish uh, on top of the dial. So without loom, that's uh, less of a problem. It's not a complicated movement, so uh, let's just get to it. This little bridge here holds down the oscillating weight and this uh, driving gear. You can see there's a rack between that pinion on the oscillating weight and the driving gear. So as uh, the oscillating weight goes back and forth, the driving gear then uh, meshes directly with the crown wheel and then uh, winds uh, the watch. It's not the most efficient system, but it's pretty good. Of course, it's not used anymore. And the key reason for that is uh, not only the lack of efficiency as compared to uh, modern full rotor uh, systems, but also that the bumping isn't really that good for uh, the watch. It's not that bad either, but it does contribute a little bit to the wear in the watch. So that's why for a bumper watch we don't expect exactly the same uh, performance as in uh, non-bumper watches. But the feeling on the wrist of a bumper watch, that is priceless. That is just very cool. Besides Omega, you will find uh, bumpers in quite a few other uh, manufacturers. Most prominently, uh, Jaeger Le Coulter. So we're performing some checks on the movement, just making sure there's not too much end shake or side shake. Looks all right. As you might see, this movement is actually pretty big. The reason for the name of the movement, 30.10, is uh, the measurement in diameter. So 30.10 millimeter diameter of uh, the movement, so a big plate. That's also why this watch is actually pretty big for the age especially. And just very, very, very solidly made. I think if you take a movement made in uh, 2010, and look at it uh, 80 years later, I do not think it's going to be in the same condition. 
that was the time before uh, corporate uh, benefits uh, and compensations required cutting down on all kinds of costs. Good old days. So it's been uh, quite a while since uh, I uploaded a new video. I've been uh, moving houses and also uh, moved my workshop. And my workshop uh, should take two months, so it should be uh, completed in time for my move. But as you might uh, be familiar with, there's a pretty famous uh, law for uh, construction delays. I'll uh, put that on the screen for a mutual benefit. So um, at least my workshop is almost ready, ready enough to uh, finalize this video. So in the words of uh, the famous Mahatma Gandhi in the movie Gandhi 2, he's back and this time he's pissed off. So no detriment to the Mahatma, but uh, I think Gandhi too would have been fun to see. Anyway, let's get uh, the watch uh, ready for the cleaner. Gonna do a rough clean of the barrel, which is uh, in fine condition anyway, so not too much to do. We're gonna peg out the jewel holes and we're gonna get a haircut. Yeah, we're gonna get a haircut. And just as a reminder, when we're uh, pegging the jewel holes, we're not actually trying to get uh, the peg wood through the hole. We just want to remove any uh, solidified uh, crud in the jewel hole itself from old oil that's uh, dried up. And we'll take out uh, the shock settings. And last thing we do is going to clean the pivots a little bit. All right, then let's get everything into the basket. We'll use this little basket with a fine mesh for the tiny parts. And then the bigger parts we can put in these uh, compartments in a bigger basket. There are some things we don't put in the cleaning machine, like uh, plastic parts, of course, but also very fragile things like uh, sometimes jumper springs or small springs. And then we have 33 minutes of quality time pretending to work while we're uh, secretly doing something uh, else. All right, we got everything back from the cleaning machine, nice and clean and shiny and everything. So we're going to start with uh, putting the mainspring back in the barrel. Originally this uh, watch probably had uh, a separate bridle and a non-automatic mainspring. But as you might have seen when we took it out, uh, the mainspring in the watch now is, uh, is in good condition. It's relatively new, I think. So we're going to reuse the same mainspring. Just put a little bit of oil on the pivot points. For the end stones, we're going to put a little bit of uh, Mobius 9010. A good amount is about one third to half uh, the diameter.
and as noted in other videos most of the time you will find that uh, the shock settings are identical on both sides of uh, the movement but if one of the stones is bigger or thicker then that's uh, pretty much always on the top side so on the balance side of the movement One question I've seen a few times in the comments is uh, whether or not it's a uh, benefit to take the shock settings out before cleaning or leaving them in while cleaning. As uh, far as I know, it doesn't really make a difference. There's uh, not any more danger of breaking or damaging pivots or what have you on the balance wheel. But you might save a little bit of time if you take them out first because then they should be cleaned already, so you don't have to put them in the cleaning separately. But as we say in Norway, preferences are like the butt. You always have two sides. Doesn't really translate that well into English, does it? Anyway, we'll get the gear train back in first. Gonna put a little bit of oil on these extended pivots where they meet the metal. And note that we're not using the tips of the tweezers to uh, press bridges like this down, because that will leave a mark. You might hear that using brass or soft tweezers don't leave marks, but that's not true at all. So it's better to use the flat side. Now this bridge uh, stays well in place, so we don't have to hold it down while screwing uh, the screws down. Normally we should uh, with a probe. Gonna put a little bit of oil on uh, the top of this uh, barrel arbor as well. Capillary action will sort of suck the oil down to the uh, pivot point on the shoulder. It's really a nice movement. So well built. It's uh, really nice to work on these old uh, movements. Sturdy, solid, high quality. But, I'm sorry, it's not another Norwegian butt joke. But to uh, put uh, the setting lever back in, you have to be a little bit of a contortionist. Because you have to sort of hold it down while you then put the screw in. So I wasn't able to do that on camera. Sorry about that. Then we can put the rest of the keyless works back in. Also very straightforward, so uh, no particulars there. One thing I forgot to mention is that you probably saw that the crown is not original. So we will put an original crown on the watch, but for now we're going to use the old uh, crown and stem. Now we'll put some uh, HP 1300 or D5 on the various posts. And where metal rubs against metal, uh, like when you're pushing things uh, against each other, we're going to put some grease. Now the difference between grease and oil is a little bit of a slippery one. <coughs> in that uh, they're both actually just vessels a little bit like a sponge uh, for uh, the actual lubricant 
So the sponge is just uh, thicker in a grease and a little bit more runny, of course, in an oil. But uh, with the grease being a little bit uh, thicker, it also stays in place a little bit better. It doesn't get squeezed out as easily. Although nowadays there are also oils that uh, sort of changes their uh, characteristics a little bit with pressure. So it works as an oil when it's a low pressure and as a grease when it's high pressure. The marvels of technology. This little bridge we're putting on here is uh, the bearing for the oscillating weight. And then we can put in the click. We put a little bit of uh, D5 around these different uh, places. D5 or HP 1300, I should say. where metal rubs against metal in a rotating fashion. As you might uh, hear in the background, there's uh, a bird infestation in my house. It's like they build nests everywhere. It's quite nice though. Let's uh, put the balance back in and see if this baby starts up. Yeah, that's always nice to see. We're gonna put a little bit of oil. We're using a 90-10 here on these pivots. And as you might remember, we already put some uh, oil on the extended pivots as well. And we use a D5 HP1300 for the center wheel. We can put it on time grapher and see how it runs now. You might remember that uh, the beat error was quite bad. And unfortunately, I don't have video of uh, the time graph after cleaning and assembling it. But I do have the audio. So we're going to take off the balance again. First thing we're going to do is uh, open up the stud screw. And if you have to do this, be very, very careful. Don't lean your weight on the stud screw. Because if you do and it slips, you're going to mess up the hairspring. So just hold the screwdriver and rotate it. For adjusting the beat error in these old watches. We need to uh, move the collet a little bit on the balance wheel. Safest way to do this is uh, how I just showed there. You can also just uh, put uh, the whole balance on uh, one of those holders and do it with the wheel in uh, situ. But that is uh, risky unless you have done it a lot of times. So I'm not going to show that. But with a couple of tries and a lot of luck, we did manage to get the beat error out. We do want the watch to run a little bit fast because uh, when the mainspring is uh, 
a little bit unwound it's going to run a little bit slower typically so about plus five is, uh, is fine so then we can put in the automatic uh, works quite uncomplicated uh, automatic uh, works to assemble the main thing to be aware of is uh, that this uh, driving uh, gear uh, with a pole is under tension uh, once you wound the watch a little bit just be careful with that and the other thing is that you want to make sure that uh, the oscillating weight can go from side to side so what I'm doing is putting it on one side and then making sure the rack teeth line up. And then we can put the bridge uh, back on to lock uh, everything down. Before we screw the screws down, let's just check that the oscillating weight can move from side to side. And that looks all right. Now this uh, little plate here is actually a spring. It presses against the case back and uh, thus holds the movement in place. And there's a little guide pin on the other side of the movement that fits into this uh, grooved little slot in the case. So together those hold uh, the movement uh, in place uh, without any case screws. Quite a nice solution, but uh, probably more expensive than uh, using case screws. So that's why they don't do it anymore. So we can put the dial back and the hands when we have uh, sub seconds like this. I prefer to put the second hand on first because there's always a little risk that uh, the second hand might rub on uh, the hour hand. So we'll make sure that doesn't happen. And then we can hold the movement in the spring and guide that little pin on top of the movement into that little slot in the, the case. So we're going to put on the, the new crown. Well, maybe an old crown. It's a new old stock crown. That is uh, the correct one for this uh, reference. We're not going to polish this case in any way. It's an almost 80 year old watch. So that wouldn't feel right to me. I do suspect that the case back has been polished uh, in a way, but uh, that's how it is. Now, one little issue is uh, that uh, the crystal as you might have seen initially, there was some compression damage uh, to it. So I couldn't reuse it, but I didn't have a proper crystal right now. So uh, I just wanted to finish this uh, video, put the watch on the wrist. But uh, when putting it up for sale, we're going to put on a lower crystal. But it certainly is a beautiful watch to have bumping on your wrist. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then uh, clicking like and subscribe will really help the channel. We'll be back shortly. Until then... Ta-ta! <laughs>